And they, they pretty all, much, well, all the Brits ended up moving over to the mainstream comic business. He's like, well, we're going to leave this stuff and do the regular mainstream superhero stuff. Yeah, at some point they moved over. I mean, so you've got replacements. you got Alan Moore doing whatever happened to the Man, Man of Tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. okay. Mark Millar was doing Superman Adventures of all things. Well, yeah, he was working on Superman Adventures, but he did other stuff, too. You've got Grant Morrison. He does All-Star Superman. Oh, Every Brit who's working in comics was working over at DC. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. But some people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? Oh, you should put that speech on tape. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. Hello, Chicago! Hello! 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 Got a drink to that? Welcome to Alternate Reality. Just called image. Yeah, they had houses and families. You got Skyborn, you got uh, whatever. Top cow. Todd, well, yeah, whatever else Todd's calling his corner of one book. TMP wasn't. It? Todd yeah, McFarlane yeah, Todd production. Productions. Okay, and uh, Eric Larson is uh, what was it? Monkey Brow or Monkey it's, Pot? Or it's something, something like that. But oh, Image right. Central was everything else that wasn't those. Yeah, it was the Jim Valentino stuff. Yeah, but Jim Valentino was the guy who originally started, it, and then Eric Larson took it over at some point. Yeah. But, you know, you don't hear much from him. You hear more from Eric Stevenson, who's in charge of it right now. Eric Stevenson's the guy, I think, that came in with Lightbelt. You'll be getting this thing this week. This is what's going on with Image Comics. This is what we're going to talk about. They say they don't do announcements there anymore because they have their own con. Yeah, well, that's pointless. You know, they want to have their own con. That's what's left of the ego of the Image 7, 9, what the hell was yeah. it? 24. Yeah. The original Image group, that's what the last vestiges of their ego. Well, it's not even a con. It takes place over one day. It's like a Friday. <laughs> Hi, we're here. We announced all the stuff. Okay, well, we're... what's the point? It's a small thing. It's not a big thing. So Anyway, a... hey, folks, Comic Book Man here. Welcome back to the alternate reality. I'm being joined today by the one, the only, the inimitable. I said inimitable. Inimitable. Your boy, Bo. <laughs> your boy, Bo. <laughs> B-O-I. <laughs> your boy, Bo. <laughs> You're a clown if you're calling yourself. And you're listening to the alternate reality. Best little podcast in the world coming to you from... The Palatial Studios at Alternate Reality Incorporated, located at the intersection of 111th and Kedzie in beautiful downtown Mount Greenwood. What alternate, other alternate Reality, where all new comics are always 15% off every day for everyone. Coming up on our 25th anniversary this August, uh, this podcast, as I've mentioned before, we're doing half hour episodes now, so we're going to get right into it. No screwing around. Uh, normally, Rod Flash would be with us. Rod could not make it tonight. This episode is going to be all about the sad death of Vertigo Comics. It ain't sad, believe me. For what it was, it is. Yeah, for what it, it was. For, well, yeah. for what it was. Vertigo did a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Now, whenever I do something like this, I always like to, like with the Captain Marvel show and with the Shazam show, I always like to give a little history behind what we're talking about just so everybody starts off on the same page. Yeah. Being a half hour show, I'm not going to go as in depth as I did for stuff like Captain Marvel and Shazam, but I do want to get us all on the same page. So we're talking about Virgo Comics, DC imprint. Now it started in 1993, but its roots go back before then. And I saw a thing with Karen Berger, you saw it too, yeah. which I thought was very interesting. It reminded me a lot of the story of for want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. Yeah. You've, you know that story. Yeah. The king was getting his horse showed and the blacksmith was missing a nail, so he couldn't put all the nails into the horse's shoe. King took the horse anyway, rode off into battle. Horse threw its shoe. King got killed. And in the war. The, the kingdom fell, and all because of want of a nail. Okay. Karen Berger had an interesting thing to say about that. Now, she was the uh, person in charge of Vertigo yes. from uh, 93 to 2012. But this all started because of the Swamp Thing movie. Yeah. The Swamp Thing movie that came out in the early, early 80s? Yeah, what was it? I never saw the movie in theaters. You've heard about it. Oh, I saw it in theaters. Actually, it's it's really not that bad. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's cheap. It's low budget. But you know what? It takes all that to its heart. Was Adrian Barbo naked in it? it no. It's not, it's not that kind then of movie. Then what was the it's point? It's not that kind of movie. But anyway, the Swamp Thing movie. 
if that movie had never gotten made, Len Wein never would have gone to DC and said, you know what, we should bring my character Swamp Thing back out of retirement. So DC said, good idea. They're making a movie out of Swamp Thing. We should bring Swamp Thing back. Len, why don't you take over the book? Good idea. I'll take over the book. So the first 30 or so issues, 28 issues of Swamp Thing was done by Len Wein. Len Wein moved on then at that point, and the book was handed over to Alan Alan Moore. Moore. Who took over the book? The Anatomy Lesson. The Anatomy Lesson, where he totally revamped the character. He told everybody, hey, you know, it's not really Alex Holland. No. It's actually a big hunk of swamp creature, swamp creature. that thinks it's Alex yeah, Holland. It's not here. Alex Holland is dead. He's, He's been, been for dead quite some time. Since the first issue of this Psych. character. When he ran into the swamp burning in. He died. He died. That's it. That was the end of it. But what happened with that, though, that got Alan Moore into DC Comics. Yeah. Which got Alan Moore to do, at some point, very shortly thereafter, Watchmen. Watchmen. Finishing off V for Vendetta also. And V for Vendetta. And that was the beginnings of the British Invasion. Yeah. Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. Among others. They looked up and said, hey, look what Alan Moore is doing over at DC. And they all knew each other, too, because the industry was pretty tight over in England. All the writers knew each other. They all hung out together. Yeah. They looked around at each other and said, hey, what's up with this DC thing? And DC liked a lot what Alan Moore was doing, and they knew about these other people. So right. DC reached out to them. One thing leads to another. Next thing you know, you've got... Neil Gaiman over yeah. DC. He wants to do Sandman. He can't do Sandman because Sandman's over in All Star Squadron. Yeah, you can't use him. Yeah, and you can't use him. You can't use him now. So he says, well, how about Black Orchid? Yeah. Nobody's using Black Orchid. So there's a three issue Black Orchid thing, which they're just crazy about <gasps> when it comes out. Their jaw dropping really the crazy. Heck about is this? So they say to him, what else you got? At which point he pulls out the Sandman. But you know, I wanted to do Sandman, you told me I couldn't do it. Well, well I got the Sandman. That, that arc's over with already. You can have the character now. And they look at the pages that. I Sam get, Keith did the first issue. The Sam Keith did the first issue. And their jaws dropped. <gasps> okay? They said, we got to do this book. It's got to be a book. Which, like I said, leads to the British Invasion, which gets you Grant Morrison, which gets you Pete Milligan, which gets you Garth Ennis, who's you, Irish. Uh, Mark Millar. Mark Millar, Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis. And gets you all those folks over at Vertigo. Dave Cornell. Yeah. At the yeah. same time, DC, which is post-crisis, DC's revamping all their characters. Yeah. DC's going up and down the line real slowly. This wasn't a planned thing, which everybody bitched about. Yeah, Not so like, much back in the time, but random, in retrospect. It was a random grouping of, well, let's do this, let's do this. Let's but do this. Flash gets revamped, Hawkman gets revamped, everybody's getting revamped. Sandman then gets it's revamped yeah, it's via Vertigo and Animal Man who was getting revamped by Grant, Grant Morrison. Morrison. None of these were Vertigo books because no. Vertigo didn't exist at this time. The label time. didn't exist at all. Now, still in Swamp Thing with Alan Moore, he creates John Constantine yeah. who becomes... Sting. He creates Sting. Yeah, Sting. <laughs> who, yeah, he's a Brit. Yeah. Who becomes a, the biggest export out of Swamp Thing, arguably. Yeah, because he's a guy in a raincoat who smokes and he's just a jerk, but he's entertaining. He's entertaining and he's tied into the whole mystical plane in the yeah. Vertigo universe, so you can take him anywhere, anywhere in Vertigo. You, you can drop him anywhere you want. You can do Sandman, you can do Swamp Thing, you can do Pops any type of do. mystical character. Yeah. Plus, the character is enough of an enigma yeah. where it turns out that the Hellblazer book wound up being a tryout book Jamie Delano. for more and more British talent that would yeah, come Jamie over. Jamie Delano did that. You yeah. know, we like you very much, Jamie. We'd like to have you work over at DC. Why don't you do a Hellblazer arc? Hellblazer arc. Yeah, and guys would come in and do like about 12 or 14 issues and they'd move on. Someone else would come in and take over. He just kept going and going and going. There was a never-ending line of people who wanted to work with John Constantine because he was an interesting character. Now, here's the thing. All these books... They're all mature books. Right. College and, audience. They're looking for the college 18 and older audience. Yeah. And you have books like Animal Man, which is a mature book. Yeah. He's doing a lot of social commentary, yeah. but based in the structure of the Animal Man superhero who's in the Justice League yeah. and is a family man. And he's also Animal Man who knows he's in a comic book. But he's also doing social commentary and yeah. other stuff. Oh, like, about animal rights and uh, killing animals for food and things like that. Vegetarianism yeah, yeah. and corporate influence on art. But when it all broke down, then you know he was always a guy who hung out with his family. He, that was his basic. He always went with his family. Animal Man broke down the fourth wall. Yeah. And that was the thing that drew Animal Man to everybody was, hey, you know what he's doing over here? He's breaking down the fourth yeah. wall. Animal Man knows he's in a comic book. Meanwhile, on Swamp Thing, Alan Moore is doing a bunch of stuff that is mature. Very mature. The book has a mature label. Yeah. Hellblazer gets his own book. Yeah. It's not a very good book. It's a DC book. Yeah. It has a mature label. Sandman, that gets a mature label. That's yeah. not a DC no. book. No. So by the time 1993 rolls around, you wind up with DC deciding, oh, you know oh. what? Let's move all this stuff into a new imprint One called spot. Vertigo. Yeah, we call it Vertigo Comics. That was the birth of Vertigo Comics. Karen Berger wound up being put in charge of it. She'd been with DC for a long time up to this point. Since yeah. the early 80s, she worked on House of Mystery when House of Mystery was a thing. She didn't like superhero comics at all. No, she didn't like superhero comics. Had no use for them. She was more drawn to stuff like House of Mystery. House of Mystery, like Sergeant Rock, was the one 
book from going all the way back into the 50s that DC was still publishing that was not a superhero book. It was a mystery horror book, and of course, Sergeant Rock was a World War II book. But they were still publishing those on a regular basis, which meant they needed editors to mm-hmm. work on them. That was Karen Berger. She also worked on Legion of Superheroes. Yeah. It sounds like a superhero book, but she treated it more as a science fiction book. Well, if you ever read Legion, it, certain times it was a superhero book, and most of the times it was nowhere even close to a superhero book. Right. Because you had so many characters to deal with, it's kind of hard to go, oh, we're going to focus on this, but we got all this going on. That led to Swamp Thing. She wound up working with Len Wein, like I said, who yeah. brought Swamp Thing back by talking to DC about doing the book. She was on the book at the time when Alan Moore came in. Yeah. And one thing leads to another, and she winds up being the one, because she's worked with all these people, right. and she winds up being the de facto liaison between DC and, and the British all invasion. Guys. She winds up being in charge of Vertigo. And under her leadership, they did books like Unknown Soldier, Enigma, which you weren't real crazy yeah, about. Yeah. But that was a six-issue miniseries that uh, Milligan did. Shade the Changing Man, Preacher, The Invisibles, mm-hmm. Why the Last Man, Transmetropolitan, and Scalped. All of these books, 100 Bullets, they all came out under her guidance. Yeah, because once the British guys left, they basically went to true crime after that point. That's when the crime stuff started coming into Vertigo. Well, yeah, there's two, technically three, movements within Vertigo. Yeah. The British Invasion was first. Once they got all the Brits that you're going to get over there, once DC sucked all the marrow out of the bone... And they moved on. The British guys brought in with a basic sensibility. This is my story. I got 15 issues. That's it. Bye. I'm gone. Well, that was a story behind Transmetropolitan. Yeah. It was a story behind Preacher. It was yeah. a story behind Sandman. You guys said, I got 75 issues. I'm that's done. It. I'm done. You know, that's it. It, it. Beginning, middle, and end. The next movement in Vertigo was the crime. Yeah. The crime stuff, which would be 100 Bullets by Brian Azzarello. Which actually which, debuted here in Chicago, because I remember going to a con, and that was when the first issue came out around the same time. And that was a big deal here when there's a con when that happens. Like, what is this thing? Wow, this is cool. And it was based in Chicago, which, which made people really get into it. Scalped. Yeah, Scalped. That was Jason Aaron who did a graphic novel for them called The Other Side. And also you brought in Brian Wood. Brian Wood did stuff like... Uh, DMZ. DMZ. Yeah, DMZ. Which I was going to get to next. DMZ. Yeah, Northlanders. Basically, it was like, okay, Brian, what ideas you have? Brian Wood was doing a whole bunch of stuff. Now, at that point, when Brian Wood and those guys were done, Vertigo really was dead. Well, no, it, here's the thing. Everybody talks about Neil Gaiman's Sandman. By the time you got to the last 15 issues of Sandman, the, at the, least for me... The at, sales had dropped. At Alternate Reality, yeah. sales were not what they were in no, the first, no. first 20, 25 no, issues. It wasn't gold and exciting anymore. It was like, oh, is he still working on this? It was arcing its way downward, and a lot of people were saying, oh, this book used to be better. Yeah, he, it was like, but he's telling the story he had planning on telling all along. Yeah, but it's not as new and exciting as it used to be. It probably peaked around the Lucifer storyline. Mm-hmm. Maybe the storyline just after that. Then it started to take a slow turn downhill. Not that the books weren't good. No. Not that they're not worth reading, but if you're going through all ten volumes of the trade but, that make up the original Yeah, when you got to those last stories, they weren't as dynamic as the first ones, but they were never intended to be. Like I said, the crime slash crime science slash. fiction slash dystopian future stuff yeah. like DMZ. Yeah, DMZ. You've got other stuff that comes in at that same time, like iZombie. Yeah. Actually, when iZombie, the book, came out, it didn't really draw much of an audience at all. In fact, it didn't draw an audience, period. It was a Mike Allred book, which no one really bought. And so when I found it, it was like, it's being optioned? Really? Nobody's buying the damn thing. Well, you know, the kitchen's been optioned. Yeah. Know, they made yeah. a movie out of the kitchen, yeah, which, which is a Vertigo book. Which is a Vertigo book, which we're never going to see, apparently, because apparently the movie sucks. Well, <laughs> you know, I think they're dumping it in October. Yeah, I, I remember the limited series, and I go, they're making a movie out of this? Jeez, they must be really desperate. Also, lest we forget, you also have books like Fables and then all the Fables Yeah, all the Fables books. Stuff. Fairest, Cinderella. Okay, I'm going to go back to my point. Once the Fable stuff stopped, that, to me, was when Vertigo died. Because at that point, you start bringing in people that were kind of hanging around the fringes doing this, that, and the other, but none of the new projects they came in with drew any interest at all. We're going to announce these brand new books that come out, and people go, really? Well, Fables was Willingham. Yeah, Fables. and it was all Willingham. It was, and he brought any guys to work with him. And he ran 150 issues. Yeah, and all that. those guys only worked with Willingham. You know, those guys didn't work on anything else. They all worked under the Willingham banner. But all this stuff that Virgo was doing, it was a trick to creators because it was edgy, because yeah. they could say what they wanted to say. They could yeah. tell the stories they wanted to tell. Because these were all mature books. They were all mature books. They were labeled as mature books. Yeah. They were labeled as mature books before they became Vertigo. That's all, like John- I said before, all those books were mature yeah. at DC and labeled as such. That's why Constantine, he could smoke in Hellboys, but he couldn't smoke when he hit the DCU. Well, when they moved him over, yeah. yeah he could, he it was like, we're moving him in. You're going, really? 
You, you want to know when the death of Vertigo was? It wasn't the end of Fables. No. It was when they moved John Constantine out of the Vertigo universe and into the DC universe. Swamp Thing went That was, was the, well, Swamp Thing started there. Yeah, yeah. So Swamp, so Swamp Thing, Thing actually Swamp went Thing moved back and forth. Yeah, Swamp moved Thing. back. I mean, my God, Swamp Thing was doing yeah. Brave and the Bold team ups in, with Batman. Yeah, in but when you had 70s. Constantine hanging out with Batman, you're going, really? Constantine was a creature of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. He yeah. was always a Vertigo, even when his appearances in Swamp Thing weren't labeled Vertigo, yeah. quote unquote. Constantine, once they moved him into the DC universe, that was the death of He Vertigo. wasn't as interesting anymore because you had to tone him down and cut all the edges off. You took what was basically the heart and soul of Vertigo, John Constantine. You, him you ripped DC. him out of Vertigo yeah. and you shoved him in the DC. Hi, you're going to hang out with the Justice League. Because yeah. they wanted to shove him in a Justice League book, which yeah. was Justice League Dark. Yeah. And that was because he had his own TV series coming up at the time. So the Brain Trust, Triple D, yeah. decided yeah. we have to take this guy and mainstream him in the DCU so because he has go, a TV series oh, yeah, coming yeah, out. Yeah, a TV book. And then people go, I can't buy this book. It's a mature book. Which last to the season was canceled. Yeah. But you're still stuck with him in the DC universe yeah. then. They made an announcement recently. He's getting a new book and it'll be called John Constantine Hellblazer all over again. Great. Yeah. So he's back. Is that going to be a black label book? Uh, it probably will be a black label book, yeah. Now, the thing that I haven't gotten to yet is we're talking about the decline of Vertigo. Yeah. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories floating around about SJWs yeah. and um, liberal creators coming up with ideas that help to put the stake in Vertigo's heart. Yeah. That has nothing to do with... No, it, it comes down to the money. With creators yeah. doing books like, and I'm skipping ahead here a bit, yeah. Second Coming yeah. or uh, what was the, what sex, was the other book? Sex, Safe Sex. Safe Sex, yeah. Safe Sex. Which is now an image book. Yeah. yeah. Books like that are like if you're sick and dying of cancer yeah. and you get a zit. The zit is... The least of your problems. The least of your problems, but it's a problem. And yes, you want to get rid of that zit, yeah. but you'd really like to rather get rid of really get rid the of cancer, cancer that's killing you. I'd rather do the Constantine. And the cancer, the cancer that was killing DC was not safe sex. No. And was not second coming. No. And was not folks like Robbie Rodriguez and his butt shots yeah. to either yeah. Ben Scriver or Zoe Quinn yeah. and her attacking conservatives on social media or Ramon Villanovez and his anti-white racism rants. Yeah. What it was was Image Central. And that happened, I want to say this probably happened about the time that Fable started yeah. over at Vertigo and run 150 issues out. But if you're a creator, it's late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. and you have these ideas you want to do, and you have these books you want to do. And Vertigo was happy to take books that had absolutely nothing to do with the DC universe. Oh, yeah, they didn't care. No, they didn't care. I yeah, mean, keep, yes, we'd love to have you do Animal love, Man. Yeah, we'd love to have you, but we'd also, you know, we need the product. We need something to fill the shelf, because we've got this imprint, and the imprint has to have So books. tell us what your ideas are. Yeah. They come up with ideas, yeah. like DMC. Like DMC. Or like Why the Last Man. Yeah. And at that point, you've got Karen Berger saying, okay, look, we are not going to own 100% of this character. No, we this don't. is not a Siegel and Schuster you Superman own most, thing. You, you actually own most of the rights to this character. Not all of it. Well, yeah. Not all yeah, of it. No. Not all of it. We're co owning this character. Let's put it this way you get some of the money that we'd really rather not give you, but you're going to get it because this is your idea. Well, yeah, well, that was a devil's bargain that you yeah. made because if you're a creator, I get my book being published by DC. Right. DC gets product to put on the right. shelves. And at some point, if we can take something like Preacher. Movie, video game. Preacher gets picked up by AMC and they, yeah. make, a, they make a series out of it. We get money and you get money. Right. What Image Central said was, hey, we'll publish your book and you keep 100%. Yeah, you're keeping all the money. You keep all the money. Now, you now if you're a creator, which deal do you take? Do you take half or do you take it all? Brian K. Vaughan. <laughs> yeah. You come up with an idea like Why the Last Man. Right. Take Why the Last Man out of D.C. Let's just say he kept that in his back pocket. Yeah. He winds up over an image and says, yeah, I got this idea. It's called Why the Last Man. Fine. Let us publish Why the Last Man. We think it's great. Right. And if anything happens with it in the future, you get all the money. You get 100% of it as opposed, the money. as opposed to now, where it's co owned by Vertigo, yeah. DC Comics. DC Comics. Now we split the pot. Right. Why would I split when I can just have it all? So it didn't take long to figure this out, which is why you have folks like Brian Azzarello. What's the book Azzarello is doing now over at Boom? Faithless. Faithless. That's a Vertigo book. That's a Vertigo book. And, and here's the thing. All of these books that I'm about to mention, think about these books and t say to yourself, would this have worked at Vertigo 15, 20 years ago? Would this be a book I would have seen at Vertigo? Books like Southern Bastards, Ice Cream Man, Beauty, Maestros, Sex Criminals, Saga, Paper Girls, yeah. Gasolina, Monstrous, 
Walking Dead. Walking Dead. The core of Image Central. Oblivion Song. Outcast. Deadly Class. Yeah. Low. All of these books would have been Vertigo books yeah. 15, 20 years yeah. ago. They're Image Central books now. Because they get to keep all the money. And what has Vertigo published? Border Town. Yeah. Hex Wives. Yeah. American Carnage. These are all books from the Vertigo Woke line, quote yeah. unquote. Which is what is being called on social yeah, media. Yeah, because yeah, when they woke. made the announcement at the con a couple years ago, these are the brand new Vertigo books. No, 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 DC never called it that. Yeah. But this is what is being called this on what, social yeah, media. Internet said, oh, we're going to call it the Woke book. Vertigo Woke. Like I said, American Carnage. Goddess Mode. Uh, uh, high Level. High Level. The Safe Sex and Second Coming that we yeah. talked about, which Vertigo rejected both of those eventually because yeah. of the heat. Became. One of them wound up at Ahoy, Second Coming. I yeah. forget where Safe Sex wound up somewhere. Image, Image got it. Image got it? Okay, Image has it. But all of those books that I mentioned before at Image, those all would have been Vertigo books. Oh, yeah. Instead, DC winds up with stuff like Border Town and Hexwives. Yeah. And I'm not saying anything bad about these books to slam the creators, because I believe that if you're a creator and you have a book like this, you throw 100% of yourself into your book. We forgot American Vampire. American Vampire, yeah. Probably the last yeah. big book. Yeah. That, that was Vertigo the last had. big book that Vertigo had. But none of these books have sold huge numbers. No. I mean, what I was saying before about Sandman, you get about two-thirds of the way into the run. Run, yeah. And the numbers are starting to dip. Yeah, it was across the board for Vertigo. The numbers all started to dip. Preacher sold really, really good and really, really steady. But mm. Preacher sold about half a Batman at that time. It's, it's best books once you get past the first five issues. Once the sales level out. So as far as I'm concerned, the thing that killed Vertigo, and I'm sorry to see it go because I think that there's value in the what the imprint did, and I think that there's probably value in the future of it, but not as it's currently construed. But what killed it was the money. What killed yeah. it was Image Central. Yeah. And not just Image Central, but other companies like Vault Comics, like Scout Comics, like Lion Forge Comics, which I know you don't have a lot of love no, for, I but know. these are all outlets for creators to go to with their works. And I am sure that the deal that they offer creators that come walking in the front door with a fire-breathing idea, yeah. pretty much the same as what Image says. Yeah, let us publish it. You get to keep 100% of the rights. And if you can take this anywhere after here. When Rich Johnson broke about vertical folding, what he said was, the higher-ups at the Warner Brothers office are going, why are we sharing revenue with any of these people? And that shows you how much things have changed <laughs> right. in the years. <laughs> these guys are creators. Why are we giving them half the money? We don't do that for anybody else. What makes these people special? Yeah, but that was the thing in 1993. That was radical and new. And now it's like, no, we're not giving you half the money because why should we? We're taking all the risk. Well, they're taking all the risk in publishing, but how much risk are they actually taking? In the grand scheme of things, not much. And what I was saying before about the creators who are working on books like Hex Wives and American Carnage and Goddess Mode, the problem with all those books are once you get past the second issue, none of them cracked the 10,000 unit mark. They dropped. On sales. Yeah. Yeah, they all drop. When I do my ordering, I look at a number one, and if I order, say, 50 copies of a number one because it's a number one and I think it might sell, and especially if they have some sort of sweetener deal, like this book is returnable, if I order 50 copies of it, whatever happens, I'm ordering probably 35 of the second issue. Yeah. If it's an FOC book where I know what my numbers are going to be mm -hmm. on number two, after number one comes out and number two shows up on the FOC, and let's say I ordered 50 and I sold 15 of them, my 35 copies that I get ordered get cut right down to, 15 to, yeah, to 15 copies. to 14 copies. Because why order more than that? And all these numbers eventually wind up at DC and they're looking at them and they go, well, none of these books cracked the 10,000. Yeah, they're going, wait a minute. These guys ordered 50 of the first issue and 20 of 12 of the next issue. It's because it didn't sell. So, for we're going, why are we publishing this book at all? You have a line of books that aren't cracking the 10,000 no. per issue mark no. nationwide, worldwide. Right. And it's like, well, at some point, this isn't worth us publishing. You got your top 100 books, and these books are all like around in between 90 and 100. It's <laughs> exactly a lot of incentive to keep publishing these books. So, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, I think Vertigo, while in 1993 it started out with a fire breathing idea. Yeah. By the time you get to 2019... The dragon started wheezing and got really, really old. Well, that fire-breathing idea has yeah. long since seen its day, and you don't have a lot of creators taking them up on it. Yeah, the dragon's sitting in the wheelchair and trying to having trouble while moving from place to place. And you, you also have some folks who are just self-publishing their stuff now. You can do it online and do a do Kickstarter. A Kickstarter. I'm going to make a book just for the people who pay, give me money. Of course, the problem with that, that I keep hearing from a lot of people is, yeah, I sent this guy like $70 four years ago, and the book still isn't out yet, and he said he only needed 10000 he made $75,000. Like At which point I say to them, I think he took your money and you ran. You mean like Battle <laughs> Chasers 10, 11, and 12 that haven't been published yet, and this was been out like two years ago? And yet people gave uh, Joe Bandera a bunch of money for Well, you know, we're not going to cast any... Those books are coming out, by the way. But he said yeah, it took him a while to get them done. I see an awful lot of Kickstarter campaigns where they ask for X, yeah. and they get X plus like 20, yeah. and the book never comes out, yeah. and it's like, well, 
Well, it's like, what are you doing? Oh, we're working on stuff. Yeah, it's the same thing with movie stuff, too. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of Kickstarter stuff for small independent films online. They do the same thing. Yeah, we need $100,000 to get this thing off the ground and get it made. And they raise like 300000 and the thing still isn't made. And it's been years. I got your money, though. Yeah, but I got your money. <laughs> But, yeah, Vertigo was the type of thing. It came, had its day, and it went. And I am really sorry to see it go because of what it did yes, for but, the industry. But, yes, but Vertigo will I don't live, see how it could have survived. Vertigo will live on as DC Black Label. Well, yeah, here's the thing. When DC made the announcement, um, the last issues of Vertigo Comics are going to come out in January of 2020. Yeah. So if, if, the, the, if you're, logo, the Vertigo logo after January 2020 will no longer exist. Right. It'll be gone. Well, Jim Lee made a point of saying we're not canceling any no. books, uh, so I assume they're going to transfer them over to other some will trans Some will transfer into the Black Label line. Some will also transfer into the DC line, which means they'll probably have to be toned down. Now, getting back to the reason why DC did this in the first place, the corporate reason, the press release reason for them doing this is they want to streamline the entire line down to just three imprints. Three imprints. That's it. And they're all age-based. You right. have the DC Kids. DC Kids. The Ink and Zoom died yeah. with Vertigo. Yeah. They canceled all three imprints. Yeah. But they're doing DC Kids instead. It's aimed for the 8 to 12 age group, right. uh, which is essentially your PG line. Your, yeah, your PG. Then there's the DC Universe. Which they consider 13 and up. 13 and up. 13 to 18. Which is your PG-13 line. Right. And then there's Black Label, right. which lots of folks have labeled Batman Label. Because that's label. all they seem to do is Batman books in the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's your 17 and up group, because I guess DC figures, hey, you're 17, you can see Batman Schwantz. Right. <laughs> that's your R-rated label. And the Black Label books will not all look the same. They will not all look like Superman Year One or Batman Damned. You or, mean the magazine size square Yeah, bound? Yeah, they'll all be different sizes. Some will be regular comic book size. Some will be square bonds. So it's, it's no specific format with this thing. Well, the interesting thing that came out of all this was the backlist stuff, like yeah. Books of Magic. Well, if DC reprints that stuff, like, apparently it's not going to be under the Vertigo imprint. No, it's going to be under Black, label. Under black label. label. So if these books are out of print, they decide, yeah, we haven't done Books of Magic in a while. They've all gone out of print. We're not going to reprint them the same way before. Instead of 15 volumes, we're going to condense it down to, say, eight volumes. Eight volumes. And start eight really, doubling, really big volumes. And start doubling up these trades. Yeah. And it'll all be published under a black label, yeah, black not Vertigo. Label. Yeah, they'll make sure that line's big enough. And so as time goes by, Vertigo will be one of those things that only old farts like us and folks who crawl across Wikipedia look, late at night they'll will look know under, They'll look on their shelves and go, oh, yeah, remember that Vertigo logo. Whatever happened to them? Well, what happened to them was in the second quarter... Of 2019, yeah. DC put a bullet in the yeah. back. <laughs> That's what DC happened. put a bullet in the head of the dead horse. So, sorry to see you go, Vertigo. You were great while you lasted. Wish things were different and you were still here. It changed the industry. Um, what I was talking about with Image Central, yeah. you wouldn't have that if not for Vertigo. No, no, you would have had that because they would have needed something for Jim Valentino to do. Yeah, I don't know if they would have. Just, I don't know if they would have said 100. percent No, of but you rights. didn't. You would not have had enough content for Image to make it a viable company because Larson's only doing one book. McFarlane's only doing one, one book. book yeah. If your line is six books, it's not a line. And so you have to come up with books to, to fill that space. And so we're going to bring in all these other guys to come in and work for us. The Image Center would have happened no matter what. There's only so many issues of Normal Man you were going to read. Oh, that's going way back. Right. <laughs> that's going way back. That's Aardvark Bad Hunt. Right. But then basically when he got around to it, Valentino sat there and he goes, I don't feel like drawing Shadowhawk every month. Guys come in, you got ideas? You got ideas? You got ideas? Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. I'll just basically make sure these books ship on time because our other stuff's not following the schedule anyway. Wow. The Image Central well, books no. actually did. Savage Dragon did. Savage Dragon does. Larson has been real good about yeah. ship dates. Yeah, him. Larson hits his dates all the time. And some of those other books, yeah, well, mm, yeah. you know. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us. Thank you very much for listening. Be sure to go to the store's website, myalternatereality.com, where you can find this podcast. You can also find Bo's News, JR's Reviews, Vito Carly's Reviews, anything you want to find out about store sales, and much, much more. That's myalternatereality.com. Again, thank you very much for giving us a few minutes of your time. Bo, yeah. say goodbye to everybody. So long, boys and girls. And for me, folks, take care and bye. <laughs> Thanks a lot for listening. If you enjoyed this show, please like and share it with all your friends. We value your feedback, so drop us a question, comment, show idea, or complaint either at arcomics at msn.com or if provided in the comments section down below on this platform. The opinions expressed in this episode are solely those of the individuals and not necessarily those of Alternate Reality Incorporated. This show is, as always, coming to you from the Alternate Reality Comic Shop, located in the heart of beautiful downtown Mount Greenwood at the intersection of 111th and Kedzie.
serving Chicago Comics fandom since 1994. Now get out of here. I have to go back to reading everyone's emails over the PA system.